This video will be on section 13.2, Exponential Models. So in this section, we'll, we will look at solving real-world real type of word problems where exponential functions occur naturally. Um, so we'll first look at what the exponential model equation is, because um, it has a standard form for it. And then the last problem, there are some examples of word problems where the equation has a logarithm in it. And we'll look at one specifically from like a chemistry class or something. All right, so the exponential model equation, uh, the general formula is right here. And you do need to memorize it for doing some of the problems. Some problems you will be given a formula, but the other, some other problems you will not. This is something you have to memorize, and it says y equals a subscript 0 times e to the rt power. Now, this is pretty much that PERT formula from before when we did the um, continuous, uh, compounded continuously uh, account. So if you remember, that was a equals P, or sorry, not A, we use S. S equals PE to the RT, um, but with different letters named to different names. The reason why I prefer to use this one is a lot of people think about this one being for money only, even though it's really for everything. And when you use Y, at least it seems a more, little more like you can use it for anything, All right? But I will use this one. If you want to use PERT, just make the adjustment. Instead of Y, you'll have S. Instead of A subscript 0, you'll have P. Now, I'll, I'll go through and just detail each letter here. E is, of course, that exponential number. So that's the only variable we have, or sorry, number we have here. The rest are variables. Um, T represents time, but it doesn't have to be the number of years. It's just whatever is in your problem. So this could range between any time unit. It really doesn't mean have to be time, but usually we look at things changing over time. But days, hours, minutes, years, whatever the problem is. It could be possible a problem gives you the setup in the number of weeks, but ask for the number of days. So also be careful when you're reading the problem. Right. Now the what the y represents, it's just the amount after time t. Right. So it's like the s from before. If you wanted the amount in the count after 12 years for whatever the setup is, this is the same idea. So it could be like 12 days, 10 hours, one minute, whatever the problem's telling you to use as your time. All right now the A subscript zero, this is the real reason why I like using this one, is when you have a subscript of zero, it's usually gonna be referring to the beginning, the initial amount. So it's already inside the equation. A0 is the initial amount of whatever you're dealing with, and it's at time t equals 0. And finally, r. r is the rate of change, but because we have e there, it's called the continuous rate of change. Right, so you'll see in the problems, we'll pretty much be seeing the word continuous in all of them. That's really what tells you to use this formula. Um, if r is greater than zero, we say the continuous rate of growth since it's positive. If r is less than zero, the rate of change is negative. We say continuous decay rate, something like that. All right, but in the problems, you will see that some, you have to make the equation yourself. Others, you're given the equation, you're just gonna work with it. I'll leave that in view while we do this first one. The first one says you deposit $3,000 in an account earning 8% interest compounded continuously. 
How much will you have in the account after five years? Round your answer to the nearest cent. Right. So once again, even though this really is dealing with money, it sounds like you have to use the PERT formula. I'm going to use this one because I like to use the same one for everything. So I'm just going to write down the formula. And remember, since it's continuously, that's why I can use this formula. y equals a subscript 0 times e to the rt. Now what I really like to do with these problems is really we have four letters here. We have y, we have a0, e is a number even though it's a letter, we have r and we have t. In all the problems you're going to be given three of them in the problem and you need to find the fourth one. So that's why I really like to write down the formula and the letters. Right. So just read the problem here. What are we given? And really you're looking at the numbers here. It says you deposit $3,000. Well, that's our initial investment. So that is A0 because that is the initial investment. For A0, we're going to have 3,000. Then the next number we see in an account earning 8% interest. 8% interest, that's our rate of changes, telling us how much it is changing. So R equals 8%, but we want to make sure we change this to a decimal. So actually, let me go ahead and write that above where we have R. R must be changed to a decimal. Like we mentioned before in the previous section, we did these word problems, similar word problems. And we know to switch to a percentage, we either move the decimal spot over twice. That's where the 0 0.08 comes from, or divide it by 1,000. We'll go ahead and just record that information. And then it's the next thing asks, how much will you have the, in the account in five years? All right, so this is telling us to use five for T because it's giving us the time the amount of time. Once again, this is just happening to give us years. If it was giving us days, then we would just use five, but our interpretation would be days for the answer. Um, but the way the money problems work, you're always going to be given years because interest is automatically thought of over the span of a year. Right. So that means the fourth thing we are looking for, because we have the other three, is y. But if you write down which three you're missing, if you plug them in, then you make your equation to solve. So we have y equals a0 is 3,000, e to the r is 0 0.08 times t, which is 5. Now, when we did, we, this is one we could have done before. One thing I always recommend is just simplifying a little bit before you have to use the calculator. 0 0.08 times 5 is 0.40, or just 0 0.04, 0 0.40 rather. But type this in our calculator. So we got 3,000 times e raised to the 0 0.40. Oops, don't need that parentheses. And we get $4,475. It says to the nearest cent and 47 cents. So 4475.74. Rounded to the nearest cent. Right. 
you know, just double checking that we wrote the number down right. All right. And that really is the setup to almost all these problems. Now, what you solve for can make your problem harder. This one, since we were solving for y, it was just a matter of plugging it in. Now, the next one you'll see, this is where we'll introduce the stuff that we could not have done before, because now we know how to solve using logarithms. All right, so number two says, find the time it takes for $9,600 to double when invested at an annual interest rate of 7.9% compounded continuously. Give your answer to two decimal places. All right, so once again, it says continuously, which means we're gonna use y equals a zero e to the rt. And like before, I'm just gonna write down the four letters here. And I know in the problem, it's gonna give me three of the four. In fact, if you read it, it says find the time. But right away, it's telling you we need to solve or find t. The t is going to be the one we're not given if you are unsure, or you just see that right away. The beginning is telling us which one to solve for. It takes for $9,600. So that's where our starting point, which is our A0, our initial amount is 9,600. We want it to double. All right, so if it doubles, that means we want to multiply this by 2. And that's our final amount. So let's go ahead and take our starting amount, $9,600, multiply it by two. And what does that give us? We get 19,200. So that is our final amount, which is represented by Y. And then the interest rate, R, equals 7.9%, but we need to change it to a decimal. So move the decimal over twice, and we'll get 0 0.079. All right, but just like the last one, plug in and then see what happens. All right, so Y in place of Y is 19,200. Place of A0 is 9,600. We have E to the R is 0 0.079 times T, which is what we're solving for. Now this is the kind of problem we solved in the last section. We want to solve for t. It's in the exponent. And if you had to solve for r, it would work the same way because r would also be in the exponent. What we have to do is get the exponential part by itself. Oops. And remember, the exponential part is the part with the exponent and its base. And then either do the natural log of each side or switch to log form. Right, but either way, Either way you do this second part, the first part is to divide the 9600, get the exponential part by itself. So we want to get rid of that 9600. And 19,200 divided by 9600 is 2. In fact, it wouldn't even matter what amount you started with because if it's doubling, this number over here would be double this one. So when you divide it back, it would be 2. Right. But like I said in the last section, what I like to do is do the natural log of each side. If you like to switch to log form, 
do that. All right, so we do ln of the each side. And one thing that happens since our base is E in pretty much all these word problems is when you do the natural log, remember ln of E to the x power makes the ln and the E cancel like this. Right, they don't just always cancel, but if we have the inside of the natural log is e to a power, then the e and the ln cancel. So we got ln of 2 equals 0 0.079t. The only thing that's left is the exponent. And we are solving for t. So the last thing to do is divide by the 0 0.079. Right, remember the ln of 2 is just a number. If you want to get t by itself, divide by that 0 0.079. And we want to round our answer to two decimal places. As we dealt with these last section, you should wait till the very end to use your calculator and then type what we got here. ln of 2 divided by 0 0.079. And we get 8.77 rounded to two decimal places. Right, so it will take 8.77 years for this account to double. Right, and very unrealistic for real life. Right, but that's, you know, this is a problem that we could not have done before we introduced logarithms. So we can see the other way it works. All right, this third one. I just like to bring this one up, even though it gives you the formula. So in theory, it is easier um, than the others because you don't have to make the formula. I like to bring it up because sometimes when you're given more than you're used to, it, it's easy to get confused. All right, so number three, it says the number of bacteria in a culture is given by the function n of t equals 1000 times e to the 0 0.35 t where t is measured in hours. Now it doesn't really matter that t is measured in hours unless if they ask for something that's not hours below. All right, so part A, the first part says, what is the exponential rate of growth of this bacteria population, but importantly, as a percentage? So remember r in our equation y equals a0 e to the rt, r is in the exponent multiplying t. And that's what the rate of growth is. All right, so we look at our equation that's given here, we see the thing that's multiplying t in our exponent is 0 0.35. So r is 0 0.35, but we must change this to a percentage. And to change to a percentage, you bring the decimal two places to the right or multiply by 100. Now you just do the opposite. That you that we've been doing the other way. All right, so I'll just move it to right. It comes after the five, so we get 35%. And that's the exponential rate of growth as a percentage. If you wanted to understand it in words, what it's saying is this grows about 35% per hour since T is measured in hours. All right, what is the initial population? This is something that you can plug in T equals zero and solve. Or you can just remember that the initial population is given at the front. Either way, you can plug in t equals zero, or remember that the initial amount is the thing multiplying the e part. So we got 1,000 is the initial population. 
Now part C asks how many bacteria will the culture contain at time t equals 9? This is one where we have to plug in, but it's telling you exactly what to do. Plug in t equals 9. We got n of 9 equals 1,000 times e to the 0 0.35 times 9 power. And you know, what I would do, like before, just simplify that exponent first. 0.35 times 9 is 3.15. We got 1,000 times e to the 3.15 power. And now type that in our calculator. We got 1,000 times e to the 3.15 power. And we get 23,336. It doesn't tell us where to round, so just pay attention in the problem. I'm going to round to the nearest whole number since it's talking about bacteria. That's what makes sense to me. All right, and then part D, really the only other type of question you can be asked is something like this. Estimate when the population will exceed 2,318. This one specifically says, give your answer accurate to one decimal place. All right, so what it's telling us is we want to replace the population, which is n of t, with 2,318 and solve for t, because it wants to know when it will happen. All right, but if you plug in the 2,318 for the n of t in our equation given, t is the only thing that's missing. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have 2,318 equals 1,000 e to the 0 0.35 t. And now that we have the equation, and I'll scroll down to give us some room. Solve for t, this is pretty much exactly like the previous problem we did with the money because we're solving for the t that's in the exponent. So we want to get this by itself, then do the ln of each side. So divide each side by 1,000. Now, if you divide that by 1,000, uh, since it's a nice number to divide by, you get 2.318. It's just that as a decimal, so there's no reason to not use it. This isn't rounded. This is just perfect. And we have equals e to the 0 0.35t. And if you've done the ln thing of each side a couple of times now, you know what's going to happen. But I'm just going to do the steps out because it's going to be just like before. We get the natural log of 2.318 equals the natural log of e to the 0.35t. And once again, the reason that this is so, works so well is that the ln and the e like this knock each other out. So we got ln of 2.318 equals 0.35t. Then we divide by the 0 0.35 to get t by itself. And so we got t equals ln of 2.318 divided by 0 0.35. And then we put that in our calculator and round it to one decimal place. Oops, I forgot the LN. And we get 2.4 rounded to one decimal place. So it only take 2.4 hours for the amount of bacteria to exceed this number, 2,318. Um, one thing that's a little bit interesting to me is bacteria does 
grow very, very fast, the amount of it. So this is probably a rather realistic thing. And you can kind of compare from the beginning, 2,318 is over double 1,000, which is what we started with. And it only takes a little more than two hours to double. Just imagine over the course of the day, that means it's doubling, you know, 24 hours. It's doubling 10 times. So it's like doing 1,000 times 2 times 2 times 2 10 times. And it's going to be more than that. And if you do that in your calculator, it'd be a very big number. All right, but anyway, that's a problem where you're given the equation. So like I said, usually it's pretty, e it's a little bit easier because you don't have to make the equation yourself. But you do realize with parts A and B, especially A, you have to know what the equation is telling you. All right, so this next one is the last one I have for exponential models. It says the population of a country in 2000 and, or was 2,202 million in 1993. And the continuous exponential growth rate was an estimated 2.6% per year. Assuming that the population of the country continues to follow an exponential growth model, find the projected population in 2007, round your answer to one decimal place. So I just underlined everything that involves the numbers or the keywords we have. We know the continuous exponential growth rate means we have the equation y equals a0 e to the rt. And we want to read through the problem. Oops, e is not one of our letters. And see what we need to figure out what we have. All right, so this 202 million in 1993, this is really our starting point. We're not given another population value. Uh, what we can do is um, use our initial amount as 2,202. Just remember that it's in millions in case we need to check that. And another thing here, the starting year is 1993. So that's when t equals zero. So our A0 is 202. We have this continuous exponential growth rate, which told us we have this formula. It was an estimated 2.6% per year. So we got R equals 2.6%, but we want to switch it to a decimal. So you move it over twice, we get 0 0.026. Right, then assuming that the population of the country continues to fall an exponential growth model, find the projected population. So we want to find why. How much is the population going to be in the year 2007? So this is telling us what t is. It has to be because we have to have the other three. Um, but just make sure we don't plug in 2007 for t because our starting year is 1993. The t would be 14 because it's 14 years after 1993, our starting point. Right, so this one really is set up a lot like the first one. You have y equals a0 is 202 times e to the 0, r is 0 0.026 times 14 power. And then we'll just do what we've done before, plug in and simplify the exponent, 0 0.026 times 14, we get 0 0.364.
And now our final answer, the population here, we have 202 times e raised to the 0 0.364 power. And we want to round to one decimal place. So we have 290.7 is our answer. But if we're keeping track of interpreting the answer, it's that many millions. All right, so we'll round it like that. All right, but once again, really, we've done four problems here. There's a few more that read different, but it's all using the same formula in the homework. Just use this setup and you'll be good to go. All right, the last one is doing a word problem with a logarithmic function instead of an exponential function. There's not a standard formula for these types, so you will be given the formula. Um, and I find this one to be, reading it, to be the most confusing because of the way the formula is written. It says the pH scale for acidity is defined by pH equals negative log of H plus, where H plus is the concentration of hydrogen ion ions measured in moles per liter. Now, if you're not familiar with chemistry stuff, don't worry, I'm not either. To me, this is just a formula to use. So really all this information is telling us, you know, kind of the units here, but this formula is telling us how to do the math. All right, so the first part says the pH of human blood is 7.4. Calculate the concentration of hydrogen ions in moles per liter. All right, so if, if that's confusing you once again, that's just telling us to find H plus. I don't know how important the brackets are as far as chemistry goes. So I'm just going to use it because it's written there. Find H plus when pH equals 7.4 using our formula. All right, so pH, we're plugging in 7.4. We got negative log of H plus. The plus is at the top though, not the bottom. And now we want to solve this for H plus. We want to solve for this. So what do we want to do? Well, imagine this was just X. If we wanted to solve for log with log of x, we would switch to exponential form. But we must first get the log by itself. So I'm just going to erase that to avoid confusion. But we want to get the log by itself, then switch to exponential form. Right, now to get the log by itself, there's only one thing to do, and that's to get rid of the negative sign. So divide by the negative 1. And 7.4 divided by negative 1 is negative 7.4 equals log of h plus. Now we switch to exponential form. Remember, when there's no base written, it's an invisible 10. So switch to exponential form. And on the left side, then the 10 comes over here as the base of the exponent. We get 10 to the negative 7.4 power equals our h plus, which is what we're trying to solve for. Now, I remember in the homework that you could actually leave it like this. 10 to the negative 7.4 is a fine answer. Uh, if you put in your calculator, it tells you to round round however far, but I just left it like this. Now, if you're, if you want to kind of see what kind of number that is, just type it in your calculator, 10 to the negative 7.4 power. And the reason why I left it like this is because this part is telling you you have to move the decimal place over eight spots, which means there's seven zeros in front. 
if there's seven zeros in front, then you're just going to write 0. 0.0000 for a while. And then some numbers. This is more meaningful, at least to the computer. Right now, number two is really the same question. I just figured it'd be good to see two of them to, but really it is the same question. It says the pH of beer is 4.0. So it's pretty acidic. And we want to do the same thing. We want to calculate H plus when pH is 4.0. All right, so we've got 4.0 equals negative log of H plus. Just plugging it in like last time, but you have to solve it the same exact way. We get rid of the negative sign, divide by the negative one to get the log by itself. We have negative four. You don't have to write the point zero, unless you want to, equals log of H plus. And then we switch to log form, grab our base of 10 and move it to the other side. We get 10 to the negative four power equals H plus. Now, once again, like this one, you can leave it alone. Since this one is a little smaller than the next one, if you type it in, you do get a more comprehensible answer but I guess this calculator is not set to do it that well. Um, what we would have is we would move the decimal place over four spots. I can't draw on the calculator, but if we have a decimal back here, we move it over four spots. There would be three zeros in front. But especially when you have you know, solve log equations, a lot of times your answers are in this exponential form because that's how we solve them. And you can usually leave them like that. Right. But if it tells you to round a certain spot, something like that, make sure you do that. Right. But that is our exponential models section.